If you're dealing with a labrum tear, then this video is specifically for you. We're gonna talk about the anatomy of a labrum tear and what exactly you should be doing. So let's get right into the video. So the labrum is like a lip around this part of the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade comes out like this. So comes out to the side, and then this is a real small space right here. And so the labrum is a lip around it that makes this big ball sit in there better. So when people have a labrum tear, typically it's called a Bankart's lesion or it's a slap tear. A slap tear is not a good one because your biceps is attached to it and kind of pulls on it. It does pull on it. And then a Bankart's lesion is you can have it in the front. They'll use clock degrees. So they'll say uh, 12 o'clock to two o'clock, that'd be in the front. And it's like, if it's in the back, then they'd use something on the back end of a clock. So depending on where the tear is will dictate whether pushing this way and coming forward is gonna cause you to sublux or come out of place or pushing back and where that stress is, it puts pressure and it causes pain. So when you tear the labrum, it ends up being a problem because we don't have a good glide of this humerus in the glenoid, so the humerus in the shoulder blade where it sits. But the relationship of the labrum is really specific. So what, when if I want a good glide of this joint, I want this to roll and glide in opposite directions, I don't want it to pinch and come up into that position. If it's pinching and come up, that's shoulder impingement, but then also if I'm, not rolling and gliding very well, then I'm pressing on the end ranges of this part of the shoulder blade right here, and that becomes a problem. So what we do to fix it is actually increase mobility of the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade has to be able to glide and it has to be stable. So I have a wing coming out to the side right here. So when we look at the anatomy, this bony attachment right here, so my clavicle attaches right here to my rib cage. And so that's the only bony attachment for this entire shoulder blade complex. So this thing just floats on the rib cage. And so if this is floating around and I have a wing coming out to the side, then that shoulder blade has to glide up and forward to keep it stable. And so that'll glide down and create space right here. And so the more balanced we can be in those muscles around this glenohumeral joint right here, the more balanced the shoulder blade is, the easier it's gonna to be to not push on the end ranges of that labrum. I have a torn labrum on my left shoulder on the front side and I have a torn labrum on my back but the back of my right shoulder. So both of those things, they don't bother me because I do things on a daily basis to make sure that I'm having good balance in those shoulder joints. And as long as you stay strong and that shoulder blade continues to glide around, you won't have that many problems with it. If it's a significant significant labral tear and your shoulder is popping out of place and it stays out of place, that's a really big problem. But if it keeps popping out of place all the time, if you actually just stabilize that and get that shoulder blade moving better, then you're gonna feel you're gonna feel better. It's not gonna cause you many problems. So the first thing to think about is what happens with the thoracic spine. If I'm reaching for my seat belt over and over and I'm grabbing on this joint, I'm gonna be putting pressure on that labrum. If I reach back and I do this with my thoracic spine, my rib cage, and I have mobility moving through this area, then the shoulder blade glides down into it right here, and then that creates space for this joint. And so we're looking to create space and have balance right there. Now there's also muscles that we need to activate. We need our lower trap to fire really well, our middle trap to fire really well, and they have to compete with the upper trap. And then we have the serratus anterior, this muscle underneath the shoulder blade that hugs the, the rib cage. So the shoulder blade will come up against the rib cage and create balance right here. And so if we're focused on those three muscles firing really well and competing with the upper trap, then we're gonna be able to get good balanced motion from that joint, and that's what we're looking for. Another big thing to think about with our labral tear is that my shoulder blade moves half as much as this joint right here. So if I'm coming up to the side, once I get to 60 degrees, this joint moves twice as much as the shoulder blade. As soon as I get to 60 degrees, whatever space I have right here, then the shoulder blade moves one to one after 60 degrees. So that's where it starts to press on these edges of the shoulder blade, and that's where we're looking to decrease. So making sure that I have good thoracic mobility, move really well through my rib cage, and then making sure that I fire these muscles up, our lower trap, our middle trap, and our serratus anterior. If I'm doing those things, we're gonna do a second video, part two of this, where we're gonna describe exactly what to do for a labral tear. But the first one is just talking about the anatomy. The better you are with the anatomy and what you're 
trying to accomplish, the more consistent you're gonna be with your exercise routine to make sure that you get those mobility deficits taken care of and then start getting strong and stable in the right areas. Make sure to check out our second video on exactly what to do, what your action steps are for labrum tear. We'll see you in the next video. Get mobile and stay active.